Alrighty guys, this is going to be a quick video going over examples one and two um, from the assignment that you picked up. But this is the second day of multiplying polynomials. So it's still the same as yesterday. You may use the box method or distribution, it's up to you. Again, my favorite is the box method, so that's what I show the most, but it is completely up to you. I'm gonna show you how to do these two examples and how to check it in your calculator. So by the time you are finished with this video, you should not have to ask anybody if your answer is right because you will now know how to check it yourself. So on number one, when you look at this, the most common answer I will get is, oh, so I just square both, so maybe like x squared plus negative uh, eight squared 64. Is it that easy? No. No, 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 it is not that easy. This is not saying square both of these separately. This is saying take this entire term and rewrite it twice because remember squaring something means multiplying it by itself. This will not get us x squared plus 64. So now it looks just like the ones we have done yesterday, a two by two box x minus 8 times x minus 8. And now once we do the box method, you can see what the correct answer should be. So x times x is x squared. Negative 8 times x is negative 8x. x times negative 8 is still negative 8x. And then remember to fill in this last one, negative 8 times negative 8 would be a positive 64. So just like yesterday, the diagonal has some like terms. So if I, we had our final answer, we would have x squared, and then negative eight plus a negative eight is a negative 16x plus 64. This would be the correct answer. So what you need to remember is if you see a squared, write it twice and then do the box method. Now the way you check this, this actually is not a new thing. You should have already known this before Christmas. But anytime there's one variable, like in this case our variable is x, you can simply go to y equals, put the problem in y1, so just the problem that they give us, and the answer in y2. So because we're saying if I simplify this, I should get this. So if my answer is correct, when I go to second graph, the y1 and y2 should always be equal. It doesn't matter what the numbers are, they should just be equal. So every single problem on here, you should be able to check yourself. Then on example two, now we can still do the box method. It's just going to be a bigger box. We're going to need a two by three instead of a two by two. So we have c plus 4 and c squared minus 3c plus 5. So that's the way you set it up. You still do the box method just like we have been. It's just going to have more numbers in it. So c times c squared, remember you add 1 and 2, so that's going to be c cubed. 4 times c squared is 4c squared. And especially on this one, remember you can pause and rewind if you need to c times negative 3c is negative 3c squared, 4 times negative 3c is negative 12c, c times 5 is 5c, and 4 times 5 is 20. So still my diagonals have like terms, I just have two sets now, the c squareds and the c's. So my final answer would be 3, no, c to the third power, 4 minus 3 is positive 1 c squared, negative 12 c plus 5 c is a negative 7 c, and plus 20. And again, you could put the problem in y1 to check yourself, and the answer in y2, and go to the table. So there should not be a single problem on your assignment that you don't get correct because you should know right away if you got it right or not by checking it. If you need anything, let me know, but otherwise you can get started on the assignment portion. 
you may listen to music just as long as you turn on a song and get going. If you're on anything else, your phone will be taken up. Adios.